important um, for coaches out there to know getting players to play other positions, not going to hurt you in any way. It's going to make that kid better. It might end up, there might be a couple mistakes, but in the end, they're going to get better. You're going to get better as a team. So that's a great message you're sending out there. And um, the tips seem to be great so far. And thank you guys so much. Uh, for our last question for the first part of our chat room, we want to get to know a little bit more about you. Um, this question's for all of you. So who would you say was your most influential coach during your baseball career? This could be anyone from a T-ball coach to a high school coach to a manager in the major leagues. Uh, Rich, we'll start off with you on this one. Uh, it's funny because I quite, I quite like to tell this story and, and it really comes back to a, uh, a mom that was helping out with us and she was an ex-softball player, I suppose. And I bet I was probably maybe around nine years old. And we got to talking about uh, how to grip the baseball. You know, it was one of those intros to how to throw the baseball. Right. And, you know, she was the first one to teach me about a four-seam fastball. You know, and this is a pitch that, you know, this mom may not have realized how, uh, how much this kind of stayed with me, but this same four-seam fastball that she taught me at nine years old, I used in the big league. You know, and she probably has no idea about, you know, like about this down the road, you know, 30 years down the road or whatever it is. But just something small and little and that little bit of time you can take to help out a child, you don't know what will stick with them throughout, throughout their whole baseball career. Right. It's a, it's a lasting impact. You never know what's going to happen. And you guys are all now able to pass that down to kids. Uh, you may never know it. You may teach the next Mike Trout how to swing a bat. You might teach the next uh, Yadier Molina how to catch. Anything like that is just a, a great experience. Uh, Scott, do you want to add on to that? Yeah, I could, you know, I have a guy, I have a gentleman, uh, Vic Holmes was my high school coach. And uh, he been he was been trying to get me to, uh, to play baseball for the longest. And, uh, and I got the opportunity uh, to play for him in high school uh, because I was basketball oriented, my whole family's basketball oriented, and I'm the only one in my family that's straight that did baseball. And he nagged me every day, Scott, come out and play. I like the way you run, I like the way you play the game. And once I signed up and started playing, and the leadership that he showed me, like you know, don't take the back seat to nobody. And and I and I transfer that over to my academy as far as you know, training my kids, disciplining them, and and make sure they play, you know. The whole nine innings. Play the game hard, you know. And I, and they they always tell, tell me at the clinic all the time at the facility. Paul, like, you don't take no prisoners. You they they try to challenge me in the batting cages, and I still get out. I still get in there and get them. Okay, but that's just the competitive edge that he taught me, and I and I appreciate him to the day because I wouldn't be where I'm at today. We went from Vic Holmes like leading me down that path to you know to be a competitor and play the game to the fullest. Right. And we all need a guy like Vic Holmes in our lives, it seems, oh, yeah. to push us and tell us to be that, that type of person, to keep pushing and, and never, never lay down and just keep going. Mm -hmm. And it's always great that we can see someone like that in our lives and as a coach. And that's what we try to give to the kids, too. Uh, you know, we, give, we hard on them. They, I'm a hard coach. Uh, everybody, get, and you cross this Canadian border and you hear my name, they go like, oh, Bullet's a hard coach, man. He don't, he don't take no crap. But we give them – you know, constructive criticism and, and you know, the, and the, the all parts of the game, the good and the bad, you know. I'm not going to judge you when you're doing good. You know, I'm going to judge you when things are going bad and find the true character. So, you know, we look at everything for these kids and we try to do the best. And, and, and just like the panel right here, we trying to get them guys, we trying to get them kids to the level that we played at. Right. And we explain it to them every day. This is, how, this is what it takes to get there. You know, the easiest, the easiest part is getting there. The hardest part is staying. Right. That's huge. And uh, Mark, do you want to finish us off with our first half of the coaches chat room with someone who influenced you during your playing career? Yeah, man. It's, uh, it was a person that actually was a big league manager that, that kind of influenced me. He wasn't a manager at the time when he worked with me. Uh, you know, like Scott was a basketball. I, I was straight football. It had nothing to do with baseball. I mean, I played it just for fun, basically. And it actually ended up being my niche. Because uh, the more I played it, the more I started to understand that it was a little more difficult game than I thought. 
you know, watching it on TV, I thought I could hear everybody's fastball, you know, as a kid growing up. And, uh, and my first one-on-one -on -one hitting lesson, I was actually 24 years old when I got that first one-on-one -on -one hitting lesson, and that was from uh, Charlie Manuel. Wow. He actually taught me how to swing at a ball. You know, I, I mean, I could hit it, but to hit it is, is different than how your swing back pass to be. You know, all the technical stuff that goes into it. I never knew none of that, and I actually learned more when I stopped playing. You know, by just watching other guys do some of the same things, just different ways. Wow. And uh, he taught me how to swing at a baseball. That's when I learned how to swing down at a baseball. That's when I started to get hitting more home runs. I went from nine to 25 home runs just by learning that one thing, you know. And, uh, you know, and, it, and that stuck with me. And because me, me and Charlie are friends to this very day, I could pick up the phone today and call him and we'll sit and laugh. And uh, anytime I got a question about hitting, you know, I may run into somebody – Along the way, they'll say something about hitting. I say, hey, man, I got this kid that's struggling, and I can't figure out what to do with him right now. You know, mm -hmm. you know, and he always we always talk about stuff like that because, you know, if you talk to Charlie about hitting right now, he, hey, man, he's going to get passionate about it. Right. But if it's a 13, 14-year-old kid or, or a big league, you know, and that's what I like about it. You know, he's going to give me some pointers of stuff that, you know, different drills and stuff that, that you can do with kids to try to get them going in the right direction. My biggest thing with kids nowadays is to get them away from that thing right there. <laughs> <You know? laughs> no. Woo! Big thing at our clinics. And, and get them to, to go outside and play, man, and, and right. learn how to have some fun. You know, you know, I'm I'm from the stickball area. You get a broomstick and a tennis ball, and you go play. We play you it know? all day. And that's how you create that whip. Now they put a bat in the kid's hand. It's too heavy. Then they lay the bat down. They try to swing. And now you got to try to fix it. Right. You know, especially when they're older, man, and, and they're not going to do nothing past practice. And I said, you ain't going to get any better doing that. Right. You, know, you got to do stuff. You come to me twice a week, it, it ain't going to work. You know, you got to do stuff. You, and you don't need a ball to, to, uh, to get better at swinging a bat. You, all you got to do is pick up a bat and just go swing and just, just put your stuff in your head. That's the way I learned how to do it, you know. That was my biggest asset of listening to other people talk and taking it and applying it. And that made me better as a baseball player because, like I said, I was a football player. So, you know, those are some of the things I try to tell them. Just because I'm not talking to you don't mean you can't listen and take it in. Right. You know? And, I mean, so, Charlie Manuel is quite the person to learn to swing from. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was, and I, look back, I look back at it now, and I'm like, man, I really didn't have a one-on-one -on -one hitting lesson until I was 24 years old. That's you know, you had, you had back then you had your minor league coach, you had your manager, and you usually had oh. the first base coach, and then, you know, usually the players coach first. Right. Yeah. Now they got they got assistant hitting coaches and all of this stuff, man. I'm like, really? <laughs> we got none of that. We didn't have none of that. Through the minors, yeah. man, you was pretty much on your own until you know until a number one pick came through and then the, the rover had to come help him. But right. guess what? That's when I was sitting right by him, listening to him talk to that number one pick. You know, I'm, I'm a fifth round pick, 79th overall. You know that type of deal. Right. So well, you, had, you had to try to learn from listening to people talk around you, right? To uh, to get better at this game of baseball. Because That's huge. That's when huge. when you're playing a team, like even with these young kids, when you're in a team, you don't have time for that one on one all the time. You know, you got you gotta you gotta kind of take in what you listen to when they're just talking to someone else. If you want to be good at this game, right? As a young kid. Exactly. Well, that's the time we have for the first half of our interview today. Uh, Thank you guys so much for sharing your insight and expertise. We're going to take a quick break here. Uh, for those at home, tune in next week for, to hear the rest of the interview. And thank you guys for tuning in this week.